Welcome to Out of Bounds, presented by Ghost Line Entertainment. I'm Sal Capaccio, and we are here once again at Danny's South Restaurant, 4300 Abbott Road in Orchard Park, just down the road from Ralph Wilson Stadium, where the Buffalo Bills still sitting at three and three, so don't panic, everybody, okay? It's gonna be just fine. They got a lot more games to play, 10 more games, in fact, and today, we're gonna talk about not really what went down on Sunday because we have the 24-hour rule, but talk about him. Big number 99, Mr. Big Stuff, Marcel Darius. Thanks for coming on the program, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. All right, Marcel, I know you guys have the 24-hour rule, so I'll let you have just, just a quick second. Yesterday, uh, Sunday, tough game, obviously, against the Patriots. You guys fought till the end, but, uh, you know, how do you pick your head up quickly and move on to, for, to take on the Vikings next week? I mean, just keep moving forward. Really don't dwell on the past and just kind of build on, build on what happened, try to correct it, and go out there and do the best we can against the Vikings. And you guys, uh, obviously, against the Patriots, still put Tom Brady under some pressure, something you've been doing all year. Really, the strength of this team has been the defensive line. We're talking about you and Kyle and uh, Jerry stepping up, obviously, uh, Corbin Bryant and Stefan, and then, of course, Mario and Jerry on the edges. You guys have done such a great job. What's it like playing on such a great defensive line? I mean, it's... I mean, it's, it's surreal. I've never really been a part of anything like it. And to be a part of these guys, we learn from each other every day and kind of continue to grow together. So the game, the game becomes a lot easier for us because we play off each other. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just a great, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Well, two weeks ago in Detroit, I saw you after the game and you looked exhausted. And I said, you all right, big man? You said, I played every snap. You have to do that sometimes. What's it like playing all those snaps sometimes? I mean, it's tiring. <laughs> <laughs> It's time, but um, just do the best we can. I'm not going to give up. Just trying, trying my best, you know. So if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Now, obviously, going in uh, to this game, and you guys led the league in sacks. Marcel, when you look around the defensive line, I mean, I know you want to get sacks. That's the big numbers. You had three against Detroit, but how much pride do you also take in just being an all-around player, stopping the run and getting sacks? Some guys just want to get the sacks. Some guys are big run stuffers. What, 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 how do you look at that whole thing? I mean, I mean, a play, I feel like a player is a player. Um, I, I try to look for the ball. I'm a playmaker. I like to make plays. I don't like to just sit on the line and just take up space. So if I'm going to be a big dude, I want to be active. So I just always try to be active, work with my hands, trying to get to the QB, stopping the run on the way there. Do you have a preference playing 3-4 or 4-3? And for the fans who don't know, and I don't mean to be uh, patronizing some, but 4-3 means you're not over the center, you're a defensive tackle. 3-4, you're more over the center, and you kind of have two gap responsibilities. Do you prefer either of those, or what do you like to do? I like to mix it up, because I played it. I played in a 3-4 with Coach Saban, and we switched over to a 4-3 with Patton last year, and Schwartz, same thing, 3-4 or 4-3. So. I'm kind of used to it, and I play either way. And then you play three, four outside though in Alabama sometimes. Yeah, I, I came in as a defensive end in Alabama. Yeah, but that, you, know, that's, that's, you have to be a pretty good happens. athlete to do that. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Now, when you came into the NFL, this is amazing. You were 20 years old, a very, very young guy. One of the youngest guys. You don't usually see guys do that coming into the NFL. What was it like as a guy that I mean, let's face it, you weren't even legal to drink coming into the NFL. What was it like to be that young playing in such a man's league? I mean, it was surreal. It was surreal. It's kind of surprising the guys that you come up, you come across and you meet. But after playing with them, I just like, oh, they're just regular people. They're not as good as I thought they were. Oh, there you go, because you dominate them a lot of the times. <laughs> now, Marcel, you've been in Buffalo for a few years now, and we know you're at least going to be here for another year, and we're thankful for that. But what do you like best about playing not only in a Bills uniform, but here in Buffalo for these great Western New York fans? I mean, I feel like we have the best fans in the league. I mean, win, lose, or draw, they have our back, they support us. I mean, you don't know. A lot of the days, it's kind of tough going into the office, but when you know you have fans that support you and got your back, it's just, it, just make, it, just, it just gets the motor running again. So I, I love the Buffalo Bills. I love the fans. I mean, we, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. And I'm sure people are very happy to hear that. Obviously, the big news this week, new ownership, Terry Pagula, him and his family on the field before the game. Um, you guys talk about that a little bit, but do you feel a little bit more you know, inspired or energetic knowing there's a new owner that everybody's playing for? I mean, he come in with new ideas. This is his team, so whatever direction we go is because of him, is this is what he wants. So I'm excited. We have somebody in office. We have, we're not ownerless owner now, so right. we're going to be in Buffalo, so that's good to hear. Very good to I hear. Mean, but, I mean, Pergula, he's going to bring something, so I'm excited as well. And we're very excited. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. We'll come back. We'll talk about Marcel Darius growing up. He was a terrific athlete in high school. He got recruited by Alabama. What's it like playing for the Crimson Tide and on his way to the National Football League? Danny South Restaurant is where we are, 4300 Abbott Road here in Orchard Park. I'm Sal Capaccio. Stick around. We'll be right back with number 99, Marcel Darius. Welcome to Excurious Salon and Spa. We invite you to come in, enjoy, relax, and restore. 
serving you with the finest in traditional and modern techniques from around the world. Our stylists don't follow trends, they interpret and adapt cuts and colors for your individual lifestyle, while integrating the latest looks and in-hair fashion. Pamper yourself with our professional nail treatments, our European facials, or a relaxing massage. Excure Salon and Spa, share the experience. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Bova. Bova Family Chiropractic has been serving the Western New York community for over 20 years. Our professional staff will welcome you to a friendly environment. We specialize in acute and chronic pain for work injuries, motor vehicle accidents, and sports injuries. Full x-ray facility is on site for immediate treatment. We also provide preventative care with a licensed massage therapist on staff. Most insurances are accepted, including Medicare. Call today at 675-4134. Skip the retailer, forget the wholesaler, buy your diamonds where the pros buy. Come to Diamond Cutters of Western New York and see our brand new 4,400 square foot office showroom. We were the very first diamond cutting operation in Buffalo. We have the largest selection of loose diamonds in Western New York and have our own in-house custom designers. Our experienced staff can help you choose or custom create a jewelry design that fits your personal taste. Buy where your favorite players buy, buy direct from the diamond cutter. Out of Bounds is brought to you in part by Diamond Cutters of Western New York. Buy where the pros buy, buy direct from the Diamond Cutter. Excurious Lawn and Spa, the finest in traditional and modern techniques. Savor the experience. Boba Family Chiropractic, 1953 Ridge Road in West Seneca. Feel the healing hands. Stumps Gymnastic Center, 2187 Worley Drive in Williamsville. By Montebaro Heights, luxury senior apartments from the Brothers of Mercy. And by Flixtures. Visit us on the web at etsy.com slash shop slash fixtures. Welcome back to Out of Bounds, presented by Ghost Line Entertainment. We have Buffalo Bills defensive tackle, nose guard, man of all trades, Marcel Darius, in the house with us tonight at Danny South Restaurant. Come by and try the great and famous chicken wing soup. We've got to send you home with some of that stuff. You're going to love it tonight. Chicken wing soup here at Danny South Restaurant. That's what they're famous for. Marcel, tell me a little bit about growing up in Alabama. You uh, were an all ASWA, I'm guessing that's the Alabama you know, State Association, all state honorable mention, 117 tackles and 20 sacks in your senior season, what if I'm reading that right. What was it like playing football in Alabama, a very crazed football state? I mean, just a lot of talent, a lot of opportunity. So had to seize the opportunity that was given to me and just try my best and never play. And that's what, that's my results, I guess. Were you successful in high school as a team? Tell me about your high school team. Well, we were all right. Um, we had an okay coach, and, you know, kind of broke up in a different way. But at the same time, we, were, we had a lot of guys, we had a lot of athletes. We had 30 players, son, scholarships, wow. my senior year. So. Everything was looking alright. Were you an Alabama Crimson Tide fan growing up, uh, or did you like Auburn, or did you like another school down there? I mean, I really wasn't a big football fan growing really? up, so I didn't want to watch too much of it. But I chose Alabama as the closest, closest big school, close to my house, so I just so went there. Did you play other sports in high school? Um, basketball, baseball, you know, of course, just track just did a little bit of everything kind of just stay active tell me what you did in those sports in basketball would you play like center because you're a big guy i mean played a little bit of everything okay um, i have five brothers and we just started five so <laughs> i'll be funny. the point guard wait so when the public this. address announcer said starting at guard is darius starting at guard is darius starting at forward is darius <laughs> that the way it went down the line i mean somewhere not any <laughs> teams yeah and then um in baseball what was your position i was third baseman so or third baseman. Third baseman, cleanup guy, seventh hitter. Uh, I'm sure a lot of baseball guys, every time we bring a guy on the show, they always say they were a baseball guy in high school. And then in track, uh, I'm guessing you ran and threw or something. <laughs> yeah, um, I was the distance runner in my high school. I ran the mile, um, shot put discus, of course, and just, just, ha just really had to have fun staying active. So about Alabama, they come in, they recruit you. You say it was close to your home, but what else about Alabama did you like? Why did you choose to play for Coach Saban? I mean, I knew he was coming in with a program that took a lot of discipline and a lot of guys there that wanted to win, wanted to learn the system and really grasp what he was giving out. And we all become great football players because of that, and I wanted to be a part of it. So that's my that's why I chose to Alabama. Do you still follow the Alabama football program? Because obviously they've had such success and they're so prideful of you and so many other guys in the league. Do you still follow them a lot? Of course. Um, I, I watch them every Saturday, win, lose, or draw. I'm there watching, supporting them. Of course, in the home state. Uh, of course, absolutely. And, um, you know, Coach Saban, what's he like to play for? Because we see the exterior and everybody thinks he's such a tough guy out there, but what does he like to play for? He's pretty tough. He's pretty tough. It takes a lot to get used to him because he's coming at you in so many different directions. You kind of, you just kind of trying to get used to the guy, but it's, he's, a, he's, a good, good, he's a good dude. He wants the best for us. 
he wants us to pick up what he's what his the knowledge that he's given us so we can use it to the best of our advantage. So, I mean, it was hard to play for him at the same time. I really enjoyed it and won't change it for the world. Number seven uh, player in the state of Alabama. Then, of course, you get drafted by the Buffalo Bills, first round of the uh, of the draft. What was draft day like and really leading up to it? Did you know the Bills were very interested in you? How did you think that all that was going to go down? I mean, I kind of felt the Bills were going to get me here. If Cam went here, Vaughn went there. I was right. the third person. So I, I kind of figured the Bills were going to get me. But, you know, I was excited to get a chance to just showcase my talents onto a bigger stage. So I'm happy and I'm Wait, uh, you were at the draft, I believe, right that year? Yeah. You're at the, what, what was that whole s scene like? What was it like having your family at the draft with you and actually being a first round NFL draft pick? I mean, it was surreal. It's just something that you, you dream of. And then it, it, come, it comes about as just kind of you just taking it all in because it's just happening so fast. And uh, you get here to the NFL, you have such great uh, teammates, but also uh, a front office. I think that, you know, it seems like to a man every time I talk to people, Buddy Nick's at your time, but Doug Whaley, guys like that. Um, People you really have good relationships with, they care about you as a human being, right? I mean, of course, everybody everybody have their own relationships. I've been here a couple of years, so the relationships develop, so we just kind of get to know somebody, get to know them a little better, and just kind of grow towards each other. And before we uh, take a time out, last year, Coach Patton, you've been through a few different defensive coordinators. Tell me the uh, similarity or difference between Coach Patton and Coach Schwartz when they're out there coaching you. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. They have a lot of blitzes, a lot of schemes coming along. We, we, study, a lot, we study off a lot of players, so. Um, it's a lot. Of, it's a, there's a lot of similarities to him, but there's a big difference as well. But Schwartz, he he got a good memory and things like that. And Petten just have amazing blitzes. So it's, there's they're different people, of course, but they have similarities in their defense. All right. Well, the Bills take on the Minnesota Vikings next week, and they are at three and three right now. We'll talk a little bit with Marcel about facing a rookie quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. What that's going to be like at Ralph Wilson Stadium next week. When we come back to Out of Bounds on Ghost Line Entertainment. Earlier this week, our Vic Ace Vito was in the Buffalo Bills locker room. He talked with the players about the big upcoming matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Don't do that. Kai, what does Mike Williams bring to this offense? Oh, Mike's a good receiver, a uh, big play guy, a uh, good red zone receiver, and uh, you know, a guy that's made plays for a while in the league, so I uh, look forward to having him out there. Of course, if anybody on the field, if I feel like if I'm in the, in the room with any receivers and you take off names and numbers, I'm going to be in the top five all the time. So, um, I mean, I guess that's just they how they looking at it. I'm not a coach. I'm just out here playing. If you take a team that's healthy, there's going to be seven people that are going to be upset, you know, obviously. So you understand that there's going to be some type of emotion there. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to be a pro about it and work hard and put yourself in a position where the coaches have to put you out there. 
And it's, you know, it's called being a pro. I mean, that's what they do. Um, and that's what, that's what all players need to do. So he just, he basically told me, you know, he's going to see what's out there. If they're not going to play me, he's going to see what's out there. So he didn't know whether I wasn't playing or was it a game plan thing. He just thought it just wasn't playing. And so he was like, if they're not going to play, he's going to check options. And that's what he did. Yeah, for sure. We want to be good on the ground. We've said that since day one. We want to be a balanced football team. And uh, right now we're not. So, um, you know, anything we can do, we just got to put in the work and, uh, and really try and get it going. You know, we played some good teams here at home, but you've got to win the home games. It's an advantage for us when we play at home. Um, it's important to win your games at home, especially in this league, because it, it's twice as difficult to go on the road and win. Uh, obviously, third down, uh, anytime you play uh, Coach Zimmer, third down is going to be an issue with their uh, blitz package. So uh, we're going to have to do a good job on early downs. I think that's the thing, um, you know, looking back when we've done well well on first and second down and kept ourselves in good third downs, we've executed and went down and scored. So, uh, you know, I think that's really the focus. I know that, you know, they have the new quarterback and, you know, with, with Bridgewater in there now, uh, I know they have weapons at the skill position, you know, obviously with, um, you know, the receivers and obviously the running backs, even though they went through it. I mean, you know, McKinnon can take it to the house. He's very fast, very quick. Uh, you're going to have to tackle well. Um, so, you know, it's better for someone else to ask how they want to establish their identity than, than it is for me. Welcome back to Out of Bounds, presented by Ghostline Entertainment. Marcel Darius joining us here from the Buffalo Bills. We are at Danny South Restaurant. Come on in here, watch all the games. We have TVs everywhere. Sundays for Bills games, home or weight, doesn't matter. They pack the place. Monday night football, Sunday night football. Come on in, have a good time, and don't forget to take care of those bartenders and those servers because they are the ones taking care of you. Marcel, how important it is for you to do some community uh, work here in Buffalo? I'm reading all this community stuff you do. Uh, you do the community ticket program. You're able to assist numerous young fans throughout the season, and you're on hand each game and also receive, they, they're on hand each game, these people, and receive food and beverage coupons, compliments of you. How important is that for you to give back to the community? I mean, if I ever had, I, when I was growing up, I always said if I ever had the opportunity to give back, I always wanted to give back. So. It's a, it's, a big, it's a big part of me and a big part of who I am. So, Can we just put one thing to rest? Is it Darius or Darius? Can you tell me how you like to have your name spelled? It's spelled with an E, not an I, so it's Darius. It's Darius. There you go. So it's Darius. That's Just so everybody knows, when you hear it said on TV, if they say Darius, that's not the way it is. It's spelled, like you said, with an E, not an I. All right, now next week you have the Minnesota Vikings coming to Ralph Wilson Stadium. Um, they have a lot of offensive talent. We know that you know Adrian Peterson won't be playing, but Cordero Patterson is a terrific wide receiver. They'll try and get him the ball. And Teddy Bridgewater is a rookie quarterback. How do you go about playing a quarterback you haven't seen a lot on film, maybe a couple games of? I mean, he's a quarterback. We get we get after him, rally his cage a little bit. He may unfold and throw us a couple balls, but we're going to just get after him, do the best we can, just try to rally his cage. How, how often do you get into film study right away? When you get back to Monday, do you look at the next film of the next team, or is it more about reviewing what you did on Sunday before you get to the other team you're looking at? I'm pretty much looking at the other team at, right after the game. That night of the game, I'm probably looking at somebody else, trying to get a jump on right. who a scheme they have coming up, so I'll be ready to play. Marcel, is there something that you can d identify sometimes now that you're in the league, like a guy across from your center, does he tip his hand, like if he puts his hand a certain way, if he leans back a certain way, can you kind of get a feel for what the play might be? Is that really that technical the film study goes into? Um, it's based off the formation and the guy's habits and his tendencies by watching film, if they're going to run a power. The guard and tackle a little closer together. You kind of just pick up on that as watching film and as watching the inside runs and watching their sweeps and, and just how they run, play the game in general. But you do get those tips after a while watching and playing along with them. Who's the toughest guy you faced in the league so far on the other side of the ball? A guy you say, you know what, that guy gave me, gave me all I can handle that day. Even if you beat him, he gave you all he can handle. Is there a guy you say, every time if I faced him a few times or one time, that was plenty for me? Um, not really anymore. No? No, not really. Nobody, because you, you know anybody you can beat across from the line, yeah. right? Well, okay, so let me ask you this then. Um, when you've gone across, uh, what do you, do you get jacked up for any certain team or a division team? Miami here in Buffalo, we hate them. We have for so many years. New England coming to town. Is there a team that you just get a little more jacked up for every week? I get jacked up for everybody. <laughs> Tell mm -hmm. me about your pregame routine. What do you do? Um, just I kind of sit in my lock and just think. I just listen to old school R&B, um, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, just kind of relax myself. Wow, it's like the calm before the storm. Right. Some so, guys like to get a little more hyped up. You like yeah. to get a little more calm I like before to get that a happens. Mellow because you know, once I come out the cage, it's, it's out now. 
So there's no slowing down. How important is it for uh, this fan base here to show up to the Ralph on Sunday and every Sunday, but especially when you're three and three, you're still fighting for a playoff spot against a team like the Minnesota Vikings. How important is it for this place to be rocking? I mean, we have we need it. I mean, it's our fire. It's our fire. It adds fuel to the fire. It just keeps us rolling. I mean, it gets us up in the morning. I mean, we we be ready to play every Sunday. We're gonna do the best we can, of course. I mean, with our fans out there, you know, we got the mafia. <laughs> Bills Mafia. Nice shout out to the Bills Mafia there. Very good. You told me you didn't watch a lot of football growing up, but do you watch football now? Like here, we're here on a Monday night. Will you go home and watch the, the Monday night game? Like how, how, how much do you pay attention to what's going on around the league? I, mean, I, I, watch, I watch every team every Sunday. I mean, our cut-ups and our films, we, we get to watch every team personally on the inside, on the inside and out version. So, I mean, I watch every game of the year through film study. So. I really don't watch it on Mondays or anything like so that. You don't pay attention to kind of what's going. You just—it's more of a job. It's totally a job, right? Exactly. Is that the biggest difference from college and NFL? You get there and it's such a job for you. It's such a job. It's, it's, it's not a game to what people think is a game. It's, it's really, it's real life. It's a job. Absolutely. All right. So real quick, one more. We'll come back. We'll do one more quick segment, with Marcel, and we got something special to share with everybody with Marcel. And for you at home to know, because we have a special announcement regarding Out of Bounds continuing on after this week. We'll tell you back that when we wrap it up with Marcel Darius coming back here to Out of Bounds presented by Ghost Line Entertainment. Skip the retailer, forget the wholesaler, buy your diamonds where the pros buy. Come to Diamond Cutters of Western New York and see our brand new 4,400 square foot office showroom. We were the very first diamond cutting operation in Buffalo. We have the largest selection of loose diamonds in Western New York and have our own in-house custom designers. Our experienced staff can help you choose or custom create a jewelry design that fits your personal taste. Buy where your favorite players buy. Buy direct from the Diamond Cutter. Welcome to Exterior Salon and Spa. We invite you to come in, enjoy, relax, and restore, serving you with the finest and traditional modern techniques from around the world. Our stylists don't follow trends. They interpret and adapt cuts and colors for your individual lifestyle while integrating the latest looks and in-hair fashion. Pamper yourself with our professional nail treatments, our European facials, or a relaxing massage. Excure Salon and Spa. Share the experience. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Bova. Bova Family Chiropractic has been serving the Western New York community for over 20 years. Our professional staff will welcome you into a friendly environment. We specialize in acute and chronic pain for work injuries, motor vehicle accidents, and sports injuries. Full X-ray facility is on site for immediate treatment. We also provide preventative care with a licensed massage therapist on staff. Most insurances are accepted, including Medicare. Call today at 675-4134. Out of Bounds is brought to you in part by Diamond Cutters of Western New York. Buy where the pros buy. Buy direct from the Diamond Cutter. Excure Salon and Spa, the finest in traditional and modern techniques. Savor the experience. Boba Family Chiropractic, 1953 Ridge Road in West Seneca. Feel the healing hands. Stumps Gymnastic Center, 2187 Worley Drive in Williamsville. By Montebarro Heights, luxury senior apartments from the Brothers of Mercy. And by Flixtures. Visit us on the web at etsy.com slash shop slash fixtures. All right, welcome back to Out of Bounds, presented by Ghost Line Entertainment. Marcel Darius is in the house with us tonight, and uh, we've had a little fun with him. And we asked you a few questions about your teammates a little bit. Who's the funniest guy in the locker room? Gets you cracking up. Even on your worst days, you can always get a little... Get a little laugh in. Jerry's win. Jerry's win. He's he's a pretty funny guy. Is he just like does he like is underhanded jokes? Does he tell you real jokes? What does he do? I mean, he's just a funny guy in general. <laughs> so Kyle Kyle Williams, he had a jokes with Jerry's win. Just pretty funny. So Kyle thinks he's funny, but Jerry's is more Jerry's is more funny. I guess that. They're, 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 <laughs> pretty, they're just some funny guys. I got you. Uh, who's the most serious guy? The guy that like you know what man? That guy every time he walks in here, he's straight laced. He's serious, and uh, you just don't want to you don't want to mess with him or get him in a bad mood. Uh, I'll say Eric Wood. Eric Wood. Wood is a pretty serious guy when it comes to football, so I'll say him. What about your captains? I got Eric Wood, you got Mario's name this year, you got Fred Jackson. Um, what's it like having those guys as captains? I mean, what, are they are they all the kind of same captains? Are they a little different, boisterous? Do they go up to you, talk to you one-on-one? -on -one? What are they like? I mean, they're, they're their, own, their own guy. Everybody have their own relationship with each other, so we don't really, it's not like he's a captain for us on the field, but we're all just Sure. Close friends and we just communicate and talk to each other on another level. Who's the best dressed guy? When you go on the plane, you say that guy's always dressed the greatest. Anybody? You? Me? No, there, you're the best dressed guy. There you go, best dressed guy on the team. Absolutely. Um, 
tell me a little bit about your uh, your coaches. We talked a little bit about Coach Schwartz. He seems like he's always kind of really into it on the sidelines. Is he like that at practice? Is he always you know boisterous and energetic? Yeah, he's always on the edge. He's always worried about something. Worried about this happening or that happening. So he, he's uh, he's always on his toes about a lot of things. So he's a serious guy. How much uh, interaction does the defense have with Coach Marone throughout the week? Is is he someone who's always in your meetings or talking to you, or do you really not really have that much interaction because Coach Schwartz takes over? Um, Schwartz he takes over for us for the most part. Um, Marone we'll see him around the building. We'll see him in team meetings, of course, but. Schwartz pretty, pretty much controls us. I'm trying to think. Is there any Auburn guys on the team? I can't think of anybody now because... Um, I don't, I don't, uh, you don't know. Do, do, you ever, uh, do you ever have any like things go on with some of the guys when Alabama plays a team? Maybe like uh, give them a little razzing or something if Alabama beats somebody, like a, nobody, a Clemson or something like that? Nobody really talks about playing against Alabama, so I never get a chance. <laughs> because they're too good and they win yeah, all the time. They, right? they don't like to talk Alabama football with me. That's it. Uh, all right. Uh, Marcel Darius joining us here at out of bounds here on Go Sign Entertainment. Let me talk a little bit about uh, the guys in the offense. I mean, you got Kyle Orton that comes in for EJ. Um, what's it like going against you know either of those guys at practice? EJ's a young guy, Kyle Orton's a, a veteran, but they all obviously have their traits. Tell me a little bit about both of them. I mean, they're different quarterbacks. EJ still has a lot of growing up to do, of course, and he's coming to his own. He's going to be a good quarterback in the league. Um, Kyle Orton, he's a veteran. He's been doing it for a while, and he's been to a couple playoffs with different teams. so. He knows the ropes. He's a, he's, a, he's a vet. He's a savvy vet. Now, how about going against Eric Wood in practice, especially in training camp? Does that uh, you guys knock heads a lot, or what, how do you guys work that I out? I don't really knock heads. I don't really knock heads with too many people on the team. We just kind of practice and have a look, have a good time and going about our business. Eric, Eric's got to be got to be tough to to go against. We see a lot of these guys. They don't really uh, we don't really know a lot about them. That's why you know asking a little bit. Tackling C.J. Spiller, tackling Fred Jackson. Obviously, it's got to be a little tough at practice. I know you don't have to necessarily go full on again, but when you watch them play, and you watch Freddie and his power, and he always seems like he's hitting the hole so hard, and you watch CJ get in open space and do his thing, you know, what's it like watching those guys knowing they're on your team and not the other team? I mean, I'm, I'm just happy to have them with us. And <laughs> they're not hitting me, um, but there is, there's some freakish athletes we have on the team. They do amazing things, and we're just happy to be a part of them, happy they're with us. You want to stay in Buffalo long term, Marcel? You want to be here for your whole career? We'd love to have you. I mean, if they pay, I'll stay. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good answer. What do you want to do when your career's over? Do you have any uh, long time from now? You're only 24, but let's say 15 years from now, what would you like to do? You want to get in this business? You want to be a coach or just do something else? I probably want to invest in land and chill with my kids. That's pretty cool. Maybe down south, invest in some land? Yeah, pretty much. All right, well, you can buy some land up here too and help out the Buffalo Bills for as long as you can. Marcel, before we leave, we want to tell you, first of all, um, See this picture here? We have a picture here, and this was done here by our man Scott over here, uh, Flickers, FlicksersArt.com. I want to show this to everybody. Um, this is pretty cool. People give you stuff all the time, but Marcel, I have something special to share with you. This picture on the wall next to you, Scott brought that in. He's going to give that to you tonight, all right? So thank you very oh, much. That's, that's, for, that's for coming on this show with us tonight, and we thank you for doing that. So uh, thank you very much, Scott. And it's FlicksersArt.com, everyone, and he does this for uh, some of the different players, so thank you. Also, want to tell everybody, obviously, um, we know the situation, uh, Mike wasn't able to come tonight and he sends his blessings to the show, but starting next week, so everybody knows right here on Out of Bounds, Buffalo Bills Safety, Denoris Searcy will be here every week with us, so we appreciate that. And Denoris has said he'll be here every week, and thank you. And Mike says his regards and his thank yous to everybody for coming out as well, and I want everybody to give Marcel Darius a hand for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm Sal Capacci. We'll talk to you next week on Out of Bounds.